Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today we're going to be installing and using GIMP. I've been asked many times by people to do a video over GIMP and today I'm doing it. So we're on the GIMP.org website where we're going to download GIMP directly here. And once we have it downloaded directly, run the installer and go through the setup process really quick. And once you've installed things, make sure to launch GIMP. You'll see this page first for the loading screen. GIMP is a free and open source image editor available to anyone and everyone for free. That's why it's so great. And it's cross platform, meaning you can use it on Linux, Mac OS, or Windows like I'm doing today. Here's what it looks like right off the bat. A great layout. You might not be used to this if you've used Photoshop in the past, but let's go through some of the features, tools to use in here. I've blown up the screen so you can see what I'm doing a little better. We're going to be creating the thumbnail that you clicked on. So we're gonna hit File, New. That's how we start a brand new project anytime we want to here in GIMP. And I'm gonna set the image size in pixels. You have, of course, a whole bunch of other options here. I'm gonna set the width to 1280 and the height to 720 for my thumbnail because that's YouTube's parameters. I'm gonna hit OK and that's gonna give me a brand new canvas to work with. This is exciting because we're working on our first project here in GIMP. All right, and since it's important, let's bring up that keyboard and go through this together. Let's first talk about the tools. So in the top left hand corner, if you go through, there's many tools to be used. Most of them, if you hold down the left click and while you're holding that down, you'll see a new menu up here. That's because there's more tools underneath some of them. Make sure to check those out. There's plenty of tools. It's not just these limited few. There are probably just as much as you'd get in Photoshop. They might be named a little bit differently or look a little bit differently, but not to worry. We'll go through some of the most popular ones used. All right, to get started, let's just use a text tool. We'll click the text tool, which is an A, and we can create a piece of text on the screen. But in order to do that, let's create a new layer, which is one of the most important concepts to use in GIMP. So if you go to layer and you hit new layer, that will create a brand new layer and you can specify a lot of the settings here. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep it the default and fill it with transparency so we can see right through the layer. And then on the right hand side, we notice now the layers section, which gives us access to all of our layers. Let's click on this layer, make sure it's selected. You'll notice that there's a little dotted line over whatever layer you currently have selected. Since the layer takes up the whole entire room here, it's selected everything on the canvas. Anyways, now we can take our A tool, which is for the text, and just scroll it across the screen, which will allow us to put in text. Let's put in text, so here, I'm gonna start by doing GIMP, and I currently have a font selected, which is the Bonschrift bold, and I'm going to increase the size of the text. I can do this by selecting over the text and then specifying how many pixels I want this to be. So I'm just gonna do, let's see, a standard of 200 we'll start with. We can play around with this as we go. All right, I'll also make sure that this is a little smaller and more uptight against the GIMP itself, so we're not taking a bunch of space up because this can give you a lot of trouble in GIMP. If you don't clean things up like this, sometimes you'll have issues when you're clicking around layers and then you'll select text or an object that you don't wanna necessarily select, tightening things up as you go. All right, so now that we've made edits over here, you can also make them on the left-hand side. Of course, you can change color by selecting this for the current font. So if we wanted white, we can select white, which looks pretty good against this blue. Very good, we've put our first piece of text here. I love this program because it's available on Linux and it's extremely powerful. I mean, it's completely free and open source, meaning anyone can get it without spending a dime and it's super powerful. Continuing using some of these tools, on the top left hand corner, I'm currently in the alignment tool. I'm gonna left click and then go to the move and then move this around the screen. That's all it does. It allows us to move objects around the screen. So I'm moving the GIMP text somewhere, let's say here in the middle. Next, I'm gonna draw something free form so I can go over to the free select tool, click on it or hold it down the left key and select it from these options. You also have a scissor select and a foreground select. Again, free select, I'm gonna do this. And I'm gonna freely select on my new layer, so make sure you have a new layer, like we made, and select the new layer so we can actually draw on that layer. This is a selection tool, so you're going to be selecting things out. If you hold down Shift 
and then you press somewhere on the screen. This allows you to create straight edged lines. So I'm just gonna create some triangle here, kind of in the right hand side, and make sure to connect it back to this first node here. You'll notice that it is now selected a triangle, and that triangle exists in this currently selected layer, which is great because I want to fill this layer with something. How do I fill? Well, we have a paint bucket tool in here. Let's use that paint bucket tool. Right here, I currently have gradient tool selected, but if I hold down with the left button, I'm now able to get the bucket fill tool or hit shift B. Of course, there's shortcuts throughout this whole thing. I'm not gonna go through shortcuts right now just because this is a beginner's tutorial for GIMP. This is for people who are just going into GIMP and maybe wanna make a thumbnail like I did and this is a great place to start. I'm gonna fill in that triangle with the current color I have selected. Here's an active foreground color, which this is again the active color. And then you have the background color, which is the non-active color. If you wanna switch these, there's a couple arrows right here that allow you to switch between them. So if I now use my paint bucket tool in that area, it would change it to this blue color. Anyways, I don't want that, so I'm gonna go back and keep this reddish pink color, which gives a stark contrast to the blue. All right, in that case, now I'm going to add something to this canvas. I have a downloaded image, so I'm just gonna drag and drop that image right into here. What it does is if you drag and drop an image in, it will actually populate over here on the right-hand side as a layer. It might ask you to do that, just select yes, and let it continue by putting in that new layer, and now you can move the layer around. Why is moving the layers around and why paying attention to these layers is important is because it sets the order of everything on the screen. I'm going to the top left and hitting the move tool now, so I can move again certain objects around the screen as necessary. I'm actually gonna move this over here to the left-hand side and lay it there. Next, I'm gonna move the GIMP logo over here on the left-hand side just to kind of get things going here and then center this a little better. You'll notice that the logo is behind this triangle we drew. So let's move it around. That's why these layers are important. If I wanna move it around, I just click, hold, and drag the layer across the screen. That will get it to a different place. The thumbnail is starting to take place. Let's add some more text. We'll go to the left-hand side. Again, the Create Text tool, the little A. We can change things up over here before we enter in text, so let's just do that. This time I'll make it, instead of 200, let's actually do 200 again, but we're gonna change up what we had here in a moment. So the color I can also choose. Uh, let's do white for this one as well, and I'm gonna hit OK. I'm gonna draw the text across the screen, and now I can start typing. So what I'm gonna type here is image editor. And with image editor, I wanna make sure I can get the entire thing in here. So I'm gonna make things a little bigger and that looks pretty good. I'm gonna move things around a little bit, center it in and make GIMP bigger since that's what I want to really show off for this thumbnail. All I have to do, I went a little fast there, I'll go back. I was in here, I'm still using the text tool, I go up to GIMP and you can either select the GIMP text layer or you can go directly from image editor if you have that open and click an object like a text object and it'll show up as well. I'm gonna change this to 250 instead, make it even bigger so people can tell what's going on here. Very good. And now let's go over and you'll notice there's little dots still here on the right hand side. This is one annoying thing that you'll get across GIMP and I'm sure many image editors. There's a selection currently going on. So if I was to perform any operations on the layer, like remove something, it would only perform operations in this right hand corner. In order to get out of that selection, I'll show you in a moment, but I wanna mention SavvyNick.com first. If you need some help with Linux and learning in general, you can go to learn.savvynick.com or SavvyNick.com. Make sure to check it out and continue your learning with the channel. All right, so with that being said, I'm gonna try going back over here. Let's use the bucket tool once more just to show you what I mean by this selection. Notice how if I try using this anywhere else besides in this corner here, it won't allow us to. That's because there's currently a section that's crossing through the text layer we have selected and the selection that we made before, which allows us only to use this little piece. I'm gonna keep that in because I actually don't mind how that looks. 
and now I'm going to go through and clear this selection so you know this, the difference. If you right click on the canvas somewhere, go to select, this one's important, you have all, none, invert, float, by color, and a whole bunch of other things here. These are probably your most important ones. So again, right click, selection, and then I'm gonna select none. That selects nothing on the screen, and now we're free to do things on the screen. Let's go back a couple steps because we don't want to do that necessarily. But now again, I'm free to do whatever across the screen. Okay, great. So back to this. We currently have a couple triangles on the screen. We have a little logo, whatever you want to add in. We put some text in. Let me put one more set of text. So I'm going to go back over to the text tool, click on it, and then put in, and then put in beginner's guide. Or better yet, I'm just going to say this is for beginners. Great. I'm going to highlight all that, and then I'm going to put some size here. It put it back to standard, notice that. So I can search for things by just typing in a specific font if I know it. If I don't, then I can, of course, search through things. I'm just gonna make it uh, this one like we had before, and then we'll make this text bigger. I'm gonna set it to 175. That's a little too big, maybe 150. Make it a little smaller here. And there we go, not too bad. We're then gonna go to the top left-hand corner hit the move tool and let's center this one as well. So do I like that text? I do for now, we might change it later, but it doesn't look too bad. We're well on our way with our thumbnail. Make sure to smash that like button if you haven't already. Let's talk about some other tools up here. One very great tool that we haven't talked about quite yet is the free transform handle tool, also known as the handle transform tool. Now that is going to be under this section where you have scaling, shearing, flipping, perspective, 3D transform, and handle transform. Let's do the scale first or shift S. You hit the scale. Now if you select something on the image, some object, let's say we select this PNG, I can actually scale the PNG so it's a lot bigger or smaller. And then you can of course readjust, reset, or scale right here in the right hand side. This dialog will pop up with scaling. You'll put a width or a height in. I'm just gonna reset things because I'm about to show you the handle transform, which is even better. So if we go to the handle transform, again, this is the scaling tool. You'll have to look by left clicking and holding down, then going down to the handle transform. Again, click an object on the screen. You probably wanna make sure that its layer is selected, it is. I'm gonna click on that object and now I've put down my first node. From this node, I'm able to shift things around depending on where I put it here. So let's just say I shift it right here, that's my first click. Then this lets us distort it here in another dimension. And then finally, the last dimension. So you really get this wonderful transform going and it helps you scale size as well as perspective if necessary. I'm gonna hit reset on this and just go back to normal. If you hit transform, that will apply the transform, but I will make this a little different. So first, this allows you to drag things around the screen. Then from that point, it lets you move things kind of in a ro rotative fashion and scaling as well. So rotation and scaling. All right, I'm just gonna kind of do this here. I kind of like it that way. It's a little bit better scaled. I'm gonna hit the transform button and that transform gets applied here in GIMP. Very good, all right. So now, since it's right here in the corner, kind of awkward, I'm gonna go back to this section and go to the move tool, top left. Again, if you don't see the move tool, make sure to hold the left button down and hit move. Then you can kind of move things around. I think that looks much better and I'm gonna move this triangle down a little bit more. All right, that seems more predominant there, and I'm gonna move in GIMP. One thing I'll mention is GIMP typically puts their letters a little closer, so I'm gonna go back to the text tool, go to GIMP. Now I have to edit this layer because it has become something different than just a typical text. That's because we added this little section here on the right-hand side. We don't want it anymore, so I'm just gonna hit edit. Notice how that goes away. So don't be afraid to go back and edit things. It will turn back into text. If you click on it as text, it'll just lose any kind of transforms or parts of the layer that don't belong to the text. 
All right, now that we got that back, I'm gonna bring these in a little bit. There we go, I'm gonna bring in the characters, oh, negative 10 there, and I'm gonna move things around once more using the move tool. I think we're getting pretty comfortable with that move tool, so I'm gonna move a little quicker with that one from now on. Next, we probably wanna include some cool blendings and properties to these text objects, which will be pretty easy, but let's first talk about some more tools available up here in the left-hand side that we haven't gone through. So here we have a rectangular selection tool as well as an elliptical selection tool. You can select things in a rectangular or elliptical fashion. I like doing this with some of my text occasionally for background. So like if I did this, created again a new layer, very important. And then I filled this with a bucket tool with some color. Let's change colors here. Boom, we got this now, a beautiful rectangle filled in with color. Now I can move this layer around and you can highlight some information on the screen very easily like this. You can change up the opacity pretty easily for every layer available here on the right hand side. We'll probably use that later, but for now I'm gonna hide this layer because I don't want that overlay. Notice you have these eyes here which allow you to hide or see a layer. This will not get exported if you do hide the layer with a no eye symbolized here. You can also right click and just delete a layer as well as duplicate and copy layers and all that fun stuff as well. Now notice I have a few things selected on the screen now. I can right click, select and hit none so that only the current selected layer is selected and I don't have multiple selections. Because again, you're gonna run into issues if you do have multiple things selected. Back to the tools, we have the free select, scissor select, foreground select. We've already used that tool. We have the fuzzy select and select by color option. If you wanna select, let's say, here's the background. We wanna select color. Now it's selected a whole background, but what if we wanted to do something to this triangle and make it easy on ourselves? We can simply click on the triangle and since it's all the same unified color, it selects a triangle for us without having to highlight it by ourselves. Going to the crop tool, you can crop things out. We won't be using this one. We've already gone through a couple of these tools, but you have rotate scale, shear, flip, perspective, 3D transform, and handle transform, which is my favorite, because it really does a lot of these things together. Moving on, we have warp transform and cage transform. We have the paint bucket tool and the gradient tool. One of my favorite tools is the gradient tool. We'll probably use that in a moment. Then we have the paintbrush tool, pencil, airbrush, ink, and my paintbrush, I typically stay on the paintbrush tool. Then we have an eraser tool if you wanna erase little things, let's say a background on an object that you have selected. We have the clone tool, perspective and healing tools, smudge, blur, and dodge, freeform selections or path tools, the text tool, color picker and measure. Color picker is great. You can select a color if you've forgotten what you used. And of course, zooming in and out, I think this one's not that great. I like to use this here at the bottom, which allows me to zoom in and out as well. All right, continuing on to making our thumbnail. Next, I'm gonna apply some blending options here, or as I think they like to call them, filters here in GIMP. I'm gonna select none again on the screen, and first I'm gonna apply it to the image editor. I'm gonna take the image editor, and I'll select all the text in here with the text tool. I'll go up to filters and go to light shadow. One of the best filters here is the light shadow drop shadow filter, which creates a drop shadow for you. you. You probably already noticed it created a drop shadow for me on the image editor text. So I got this dialog box. I can adjust how far away that drop text kind of occurs. I'm gonna do around 20 here. And then you can set a blur radius. So how blurry this is, right? This looks way too sharp. So I'm gonna blur it, I don't know, right around 10 perhaps. And then the opacity level is really the transparency of whatever color you have selected. You can select the color here. So if you wanted a different color or play around with this, you have all that capability. Of course, I like the black, so I'm gonna keep that here. I'm gonna bring things in a little bit. Let's see, maybe right there. That looks great to me. And I'm gonna change the grow radius a little bit and let's just make the opacity a little more. Now it really sticks out compared to these other text objects I have. And now I can hit okay or reset to reset things. I like it the way it is, so I'm gonna keep it this way. All right, we're gonna continue on. Let's go up here and then I'm going to select a different color for this one, just to kind of make it stand out. One of the other colors I've used in the past kind of matches this one. I think it is the same one. 
I'm gonna select that and let's apply another filter here. I'm gonna go down to the light and shadow, one of my favorites, and let's apply a long shadow this time. This creates a shadow effect that makes things look 3D. Now you see how long this shadow is. I'm gonna select this dark color and then you can change up the length. This of course, again, makes things look 3D for you. So it's a great tool to use if you wanna use it. I think that's a little much. Let's just do it something like that. I'm gonna hit okay. So now we have kind of like a 3D text effect there. I'm gonna keep for beginners the way it is. I think it's fine. If anything, I probably just need to make it a little bigger. Anyways, let's get a little more creative here. I want to show the brush tool. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna bring a tablet into the mix. So on the tablet side of things, what I can do is actually use a tablet inside of GIMP. So if I'm going across the screen, not sure if you can see the cursor too well, but I can draw directly on here. First, I wanna select the paintbrush tool. And I have a few settings over here on the left. I'm not gonna go through them all, but that's my setup. And then I'm gonna try drawing on here. So what I'm gonna do is, let's just draw a simple arrow right here. And notice that I screwed up because I don't have the proper layer selected. I'm gonna create a new layer and deselect. So first I'm gonna hit Control Z a couple times just to do an undo. And then I'm going to go to layer, new layer, and hit okay. Now that I have a new layer, I can finally draw freely on top of things and I'm gonna draw that arrow. Very good. And I'm gonna keep retrying until I get a decent enough arrow or at least I think it's decent enough. There we go, that looks good to me. And then finally, I'll add in a little bit of extra stuff on the screen. Let's just say I'm gonna add in a little squigglies underneath. And notice how the layers kind of messed up. Now it's kind of covering GIMP. I don't want it to do that. Instead, I'll put it in the background. That looks all right, but I think I can make it better. So let me retry real quick. And I'm gonna put it right underneath GIMP this time, a little easier. There we go. Kind of just highlighting GIMP there. And then I'm gonna put some dots across the screen just to spice things up, why not? Just showing the power of GIMP and how it actually works with a tablet as well as just using it all throughout with a keyboard and mouse. All right, I'm getting very close to having it how I want and I'm going to pretty much save it here. I'll show you how to do a save real quick as well. It's important to get that right and show you how to export things here in GIMP as well. All right, what we'll do is file, save as, find a place to save things and call it whatever you want. I'm gonna call it Savvy Nick and the typical file here is an XCF file which denotes a GIMP file. You can save it wherever you want, save that. And in order to export, you go up to file, export, that makes things a little easier. You can export it for whatever extension you want and hit export. Besides that, that's a great primer for beginners. I don't know what else you really need to know at this point. This will get you started using GIMP really quick, at least in my opinion. I'm gonna play around with this a little bit more and clear things up. Well, I hope you learned a little bit about GIMP, free and open source image editor. If you did, make sure to smash that like button for me. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.